Hello and welcome to DIY Tech Haven. Today let's create a ESP32 data logger for your Epiver MPPT solar charge controller. Introduction In this tutorial, I will guide you through the process of setting up an ESP32-based data logger for your MPPT charge controller, specifically the EP Ever Tracer MPPT, using ESP Home and Home Assistant. This setup will allow you to monitor the performance of your charge controller, including key metrics like voltage, current, power, and energy production in real-time. Requirements Compatible MPPT Charge Controller This method is tested with TracerAN series and XTRA series. Probably works for other Epiver MPPT controllers as well. You'll need any variant of ESP32 with available UART pins, like ESP32 DevKit C. For communication with the MPPT charge controller, you can use a MAX 485RS485 to TTL module. This module is inexpensive and widely available. Alternatively, you can use an isolated RS485 to TTL module, but this will require minor wiring adjustments and slight modifications to the ESP home code. To monitor data, you need a home assistant setup. Ethernet cable with RJ45 connector commonly referred to as a network or LAN cable. Setup of the hardware. Let's connect the MAX485 module to the ESP32. See the wiring diagram, connect all the wires correctly to the ESP32 module. You'll also need to solder the MAX485 DE and RE pins and connect them to the GPIO2 pin of the ESP32. If your power source for the ESP32 is from the battery of the solar charge controller, a ground loop may occur since the MAX485 module is not isolated. To avoid this, skip connecting the GND wire of the ESP32 with the GND of the MAX485 module for now. Cut the Ethernet cable from one end and extract the three wires shown in the diagram. Make sure the wiring layout matches the reference image exactly. Connect those three wires to the MAX485 module as shown. Setup of ESP32 code in ESP Home. Let's start configuring the ESP Home code for the ESP32. The original code comes from the ESP Home documentation and is designed for the Epiver device. However, I have improved it by referring to the device's Modbus registry, allowing changes to battery charging settings in user mode, something the original code couldn't do and needed a USB cable with Epiver software. I have also attached the YAML code in video description. Please review the code, update the Wi-Fi settings, and make any necessary adjustments. You can also enable or disable sensors as needed. Additionally, I have slowed down the refresh rate for some sensors to prevent them from updating every 5 seconds. The onboard setting buttons do not allow changing battery settings for the use profile. If you're using lithium iron phosphate, LFP, batteries, the default LFP profile often has a charging voltage that's too high for daily charging. To properly configure the charging parameters, you need to use the use profile. Testing ESP EP Ever Communication Flash the ESP32 with the correct Wi-Fi and other settings for your device. Connect the Ethernet cable to the charge controller's communication port. Remember to disconnect the ESP32 GND from the MAX485 module if using a common power source, as previously advised. Check if data is received, the onboard blue LED on the ESP32 will flash. If not, verify the wiring of the RJ35 connector. You can safely swap MPPTA and MPPTB if they were connected incorrectly. If data is still not coming through, try establishing a common ground by connecting the ESP32 GND to the MAX485 GND. Also, check the module's temperature, it will heat up quickly if something is wrong. If the blue LED flashes, everything is working, and you're good to go. Visualize data in Home Assistant. Now, head back to Home Assistant and check your ESP device. You should see the sensors receiving data. All essential sensors and settings are included. You can create a dashboard for your charge controller, or even integrate it with InfluxDB and visualize the data on Grafana. I've also included some sample dashboards to get you started. Thanks for watching.
If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more DIY tech projects. Stay tuned, more fun and exciting builds coming soon.